What's up, Dragon Brood? So today I want to kind of talk about a thing that people kind of have a big misconception can misconception about. I don't, blah, 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 blah. There you go. Well, really, it's talking about the difference between aggro decks and control decks. And actually, I guess one of the big beliefs is that if you play a control deck, you're a smarter, better player. And if you play an aggro deck, you're a weaker, worse player. And the reality is not really true. I mean, even look at some of the best players in the world. We've had recent large events where arguably one of the end boss of the big events over the last probably two or three years, Seth Manfield, decided he was going to play mono red aggro. I mean, are you going to challenge Seth and say that he's a terrible player for playing mono red aggro? I'm not saying that that's the only aggro deck that's different, but just saying it's a thing. And in a lot of cases, when you're playing control decks, you're mostly just sitting there and it's just about patience more than actually having to be strategic. Each one can be played in a way that actually is harder to play and more strategic. I mean, even on this channel, as much as I like aggro decks, there's some that play more like mid rangey quirky decks and others that are just all out go for the throat. And then we still have the possibility of having decks that are control decks that are more proactive and some that are more reactive. So I think it's more about the individual deck and the player. I'm not going to assume my opponent's worse sitting across the table from me just because they're playing an aggro deck or that they're better just because they're playing a control deck. I'd even argue that I've seen more control players that are bad magic players than aggro players, mostly because their plan is just try to counter and remove stuff. And then when they can't, they don't know what to do. But anyway, to that end, today we're playing a control deck <laughs> and it's a little bit different. We're playing some just guy control using several new cards. I just really want to see how some stuff works together. I haven't actually played this style of control deck in a while, so it's a small treat for me as well as you as a viewer here on the channel. And, uh, you know, I'll just leave it to y'all to let me know what you think. But let's go take a look at this Just Guy control deck. Alright, so... Again, coming back to playing control deck, I did want to have some cards that I was already familiar with that I liked and that I enjoyed. And I think that's one way that you can build decks to keep yourself engaged is if you know that games are gonna be slower and take longer or whatever, like playing with things you enjoy or even things you're familiar with can at least make the thinking process a little bit easier when you're having to make those long drawn out interactive uh, type sequences. But here we're starting with Yorari's Disruption. It's a counter, it's also a land, which is good because it's going to be a very mana hungry deck that we're going to need mana for for a lot of things. So if we get it early, great, we'll use it to counter something. If not, we'll go ahead and just play it as a land. Uh, Fire Prophecy. This is the removal of choice. I did debate playing a Bone Crusher Giant in this slot, but what I decided to go with is Fire Prophecy because one, it deals three instead of two, and that's a big thing when we're not going to have creatures to do battle. The other part of that is it does actually let us cycle cards to help us find some more mana if we need it, or even just find a key, key component to the situation. Saw it coming, not a surprise. Everybody's seen this card enough now. Uh, we are playing one Rowan Scholar of Sparks. We're playing a bunch of spells. Uh, all of our spells, I think, have colorless mana in them. So if we resolve a Rowan, it could be very powerful. Maybe there should even be two of these in the deck, truthfully, to help you kind of close the game a little bit faster. But uh, if not, we'll see. But uh, we'll talk about that on the other side of the, the games here on the video. Prismari Command. I think this is the best of the new commands. I think this card's awesome. It can filter cards if you're looking to just, like, search for something. It can get you treasure if you need to have extra mana the next turn to get ahead. It can... Destroy an artifact, which does come in handy. Sometimes you need to destroy a treasure to keep their mana down. Sometimes you need to destroy an ember cleave. You know, other times you just use the two damage to just kill off creatures, which a lot of times the most common combination for me is kill something, make a treasure, or kill something, uh, draw two cards. So the destroy an artifact is probably the least used, but it is important when you decide to use it. Draconic Intervention. I went with this as my removal of choice, mostly because as we go through this list, you'll see that there's a few Planeswalkers. So using something like Storm's Wrath would have just been really bad because we hit our own Planeswalkers too. And I didn't want to have to manage that. This also allows us to do bigger sweepers, right? Because we're going to have some spells that are four, seven, eight mana. 
this lets us actually get rid of bigger things. So I decided to roll with Draconic Intervention. It, the other thing, too, is it also exiles the cards that are dealt damage and go away. So don't have to worry about that. Uh, three Narsets just as a way to gain some life, get us some extra mana, uh, try to get to an in-game state, you know, use this, the Planeswalkers if we have to. Uh, one Chandra. Chandra's really good at just, like, closing out the game. You know, you get to a situation where you've killed off a couple things, you know, your hand's junk, you get to draw three, get access to some more cards. Like, just a good filler Planeswalker. It's really sad that uh, Chandra's going to be rotating out of standard here in probably another five months, six months. And really just didn't get to see a lot of play. Great card. Four Shark Typhoon. Uh, obviously, I think we've all seen this enough that you can make either Flying Sharks or you can play it as a six mana enchantment. And then every time you play a non-creature spell, you get to make a, a shark of that size. It actually, I think this is going to be the proactive card for me in this list. I think you just get to a point where you can resolve it and then just start going off. Creative Outburst. This card... I like that it has treasure cycling, as I call it. You know, you can pay to get a treasure. But it is really powerful. Being able to just deal five to a thing is great. And this is another thing, too. If you look at this list, I mean, if we go down this, like, you know, Rowan can deal some damage. You've got Prismari Command that can deal damage. Narset, although Narset just hits creatures. Uh, Chandra that can deal damage. You have the Shark Typhoon. You've got Creative Outburst. Like, all of these, even with just spell heavy, can deal enough to start closing out the games on their own. And then we also have Magma Opus. This also does damage. Can buy you time on those late turns, tapping attackers, making blockers. Like, Magma Opus really just does everything. And then Shatter Skull Smashing. Another card that can also be a land, if we need it to be a land. But, you know, kind of lets you take out two or three creatures if you need Well, not three, but two creatures <laughs> if you need it. Um, well, I guess it lets you guess could take three if we had enough mana, but not likely. Then we have Nico Eris. And this is the card that I don't know how good it is. It seems good. What I think Nico's role is in this deck is just get to the late stages of the game where you and the opponent are both either out of cards or close to out of cards. You know, maybe one or two cards in hand. You cast Nico for like five or six, get a bunch of uh, shards. And then from there, start trying to close the game out. Because then you can just pay two, draw a card, pay two, draw a card. And really start trying to win that way. So I don't think we're looking to play Nico until the game's either at a stalemate where we've kind of both exhausted our resources. Or we're close enough at a stalemate that we're trying to just get ahead. You know, that's really it. I don't think we're trying to play Nico in like the middle stages of the game. I don't think that's the type of Planeswalker this is. We'll see though. I could be wrong. And then we've got Castle Vantress, Island, two Mountain, some Pathways. We're playing four of each, four Catcher Triumph, because we don't have a Jeskai Triumph, so we're playing this to get blue and red. And then a couple of Temple of Epiphany is where we're at. Uh, I would say it's possible that we could cut a land, maybe, and put another spell in. But uh, let's check out the games, and we'll talk about that on the other side. The fun spelling of Shangri-La. <laughs> Uh, we're going to need another red mana for the Draconic Intervention, but otherwise this is hand... Okay, what are we up against? Oh. Okay. Hmm. Yep. Wish we'd have been on the play. That would have definitely changed some things. Um... Well, we do have Draconic Intervention to lean back on soon. I'll have to take some damage. But I think that's okay. I think we just put this into play here. We pass. I think we leave Saw It coming up next turn, just in case. Oh, did the opponent get stuck on mana? Okay, well, knowing that, let's go ahead and play this, and we'll just pass. So we can take five here and not be too concerned. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to counter that. If the opponent's stuck on lands, let's go ahead and use this. 
Just be like, hey, we'll take five. We're gonna wipe your board out anyway. Just Roar's Disruption costs two. Everything's two or smaller. So, totally reasonable action. And then hopefully Narset's able to come in and start cleaning stuff up. Clarion Spirits. Uh, they don't have haste creatures. So I think I will go ahead and Narset. question is, do we plus Narset or not? I think we just minus Narset. Because uh, uh, we could do that again. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. Then act. I might actually want this later, but that's fine. I mean, I'm assuming they have just a bunch of cheap creatures in hand. Oh, Bastion. That's a good one. Wish I would have countered that. Alright, we're just gonna draw. Uh, add a blue, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and foretell that. And then that leaves us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright, so if we can get one more land, we can just magma opus next turn. Yeah, we're down with that. I like that. Also, Draconic Intervention is really good against Bastion because it just gets rid of the cards all together. I'm gonna attack Narset and keep her down. Fair enough. I'm not gonna argue with that. Please settle down. Village rights. Let's uh let's counter the village rights. Let's keep the opponent down on resources. There you go. Oh boy, that is a lot of tapped mana. We're playing against Yorian. Um, I think we mulligan. I think we need the counters against Yorian more. We're going to keep this. I'm not sure what's most important against them, so I'm going to go ahead and put the Shark Typhoon back. Only because of the logic that they do play stuff, if it's Sultai, they play stuff like Binding on the old gods and whatnot. Okay, it looks like it is. And we're going to have so many things, so few things from the target with their spot removal. That it's very possible that it, even if we didn't cycle to make a shark, it would just die to like Heartless Act or something. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess we do this. And then we pass. I mean, really, if they play anything that tries to ramp their mana or something, we could try to counter it. If we want to turn that into a thing. Sadly, I don't see us resolving a Narset. <laughs> I assume this is an Omen of the Sea incoming. Oh, Omen of the Sun. Okay, are we not doing what I thought we were doing here? Okay. That's a thing, I suppose. I don't think how I feel about this. Like, if we... Command, kill a thing, get a treasure... What do we do with that? Like, do we try to sneak through a Narset? Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, let's just take two. I'm not really sure what else to do here. So they've got 
black, blue, green. They've got black, white, green, and white. All right, we'll try this. Uh, the thought here is kill a creature. If we draw a land, we can Narset with Saw It coming back up. I mean, they could Mystical Dispute here. Okay, they just went on a gate. That's fine, I suppose. <laughs> like, not the best thing, not the worst thing. Huh. What do we do? I mean... I feel like they we're just going to lead to just... Finding of the old gods. I don't think that's what we want to do just yet. I think we need to do it where we can protect Narset if we're going to do it. So the plan here is going to be shoot one of these. Uh, we will go ahead and push Nico because I don't think that's going to get us there. Ah, wish that was an untapped land. Okay. I think we're going to have to treasure cycle the uh, magma opus. All right, here's hoping. I mean, maybe they want to destroy our treasure? Like, I don't know. That was a weird hesitation there. Hmm. Now that's intriguing. Okay. Because, I mean, if they just play Yorian next turn, then they just make a bunch of things that we can get rid of with that, I guess. Part of me wants to sacrifice Narset <laughs> for the cause, but I'm not going to do it. Just assuming that the opponent had a way to kill Narset. I'm not sure what they're... I mean, it has to be a counter, but there's a lot of people playing like main deck, disdainful strokes. They obviously showed they're playing the gates. Also, they now know we left a card on top. So if they were going to save in the gate, it'd probably be for what was on there because they haven't seen us play any creatures yet. So it would be smart for the opponent to just play it slow here. No, they're just going in on the Yorian, huh? I mean, do they have like miscast or something? All right. I mean, if they do, they do. We'll, we'll just get got. I mean, there's no point countering the Yorian. We can just get rid of the whole board. I mean, they get some life, but that's fine. Uh, do we cycle the Triome is the question. One, two, three, four. I think we just keep... Uh, hmm. I think we keep it and just try to set up an easy Narset follow-up with that uh, saw it coming. I'm going to get Magma Opus because that's the only thing that gets everybody. All right. We still have plenty of life to operate with, but the opponent has way more cards than we do. Good news is, if we get in a stalemate, we do have Castle Vantress. So if their hand ends up being just removal and stuff, then we're like, okay, well, we'll just try to get our best cards every time. And then every other turn, <laughs> try to resolve the spell, I guess. Moment of the Sea works.
Okay, bottom, bottom. Okay, that's not so bad. Okay, that we aren't going to let fly. Okay, well, I guess this is all we can do. Let me demonstrate the prowess of my... Let me help you practice. I mean, they probably have another Doom foretold, but, you know, like, Narset tried. Yep, that's what I thought. Not a surprise. Uh, you know what? We're okay with this. Oh, wait, I'll have to discard a card. Hold on. If this goes away, we have to discard, so... I want to keep this. Since I have at least one live spell, I'd rather just keep the spell. I'm curious how many Yorians they're playing, though. That could be good information for later. Archon. Okay, I guess we're going to need this uh, Archonic Intervention after all. Alright, so we're looking for a counter, most likely. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Ooh, those are not what we need right now. Sure. We'll get rid of that. Unfortunately, them getting to draw another card is bad for us. Six. And I really need one more mana. I think we're just going to do this. And uh, hope for the best. I'm not really sure. If they have two counters, we're just dead. I think is where things are at. Actually, I don't even think we have anything that costs... Four, actually, that's a bigger problem because it has to be an instant or a sorcery. Hmm, we can only deal three right now. I should have kept one of those fire prophecies, actually. All right, that probably gets countered. No, it doesn't. Do they just have creature removal in hand, then? Oh, full of crowns. Ooh. I was like, hopefully, maybe we get something where we can cycle this, but no, we're just dead. Alright, GG's. It's definitely not a keeper. This one's much better. What's, uh... Ooh, do I scrap the magma opus? I think so. It was a tougher decision than I wanted it to be. I'll put that on blue. We only ever really need like one white mana, so we don't need to worry about that too much. A oh, riddle form, huh? Riddle form might get us, believe it or not. That is a very bad card for us. Because all they have to do is cast a spell seven times and we die. Unless we end up uh, with a fire prophecy to kill it, maybe. Or a shark typhoon to block it. Otherwise, that thing's going to eat our lunch. Uh, let's counter that. It's not what I expected to see there. Truthfully, I was thinking it might be like... Uh, Sprite Dragon or something. And maybe they don't have that many spells. Okay. Um. How do we feel about this? I'm just like, this is so confusing. Uh, Alright, we'll play this. 
and we'll pass. Mostly because there's a chance disruption could still do a thing. I uh, probably should have just saw it coming there. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. We don't need two riddle forms. One's already going to be hard for us to survive. I don't believe that truly helps us. And then we'll just pass. If possible, I'd like to get away, get away with just using a Drari's Disruption on something. Don't know if we'll get that lucky. Okay, well, I was just going to shoot that. Oh boy, let's see what we can do with this. I am not the big like i don't mind control decks when they're i guess you want to call them proactive control decks but this is totally not my normal style but we'll see i think it can can still make this work all right i think here i'm still gonna put this on blue just to unlock these if we want them uh, actually, I say that. I think I'll do this. And I'll just pay the three. Oh, wait. Wrong thing. There we go. Let's pay the three. And we'll just pass. Because now we can disruption, still have a third land. We could play this and make a treasure if we need to. Or treasure cycle one of these, as I call it. Uh, let's go ahead and let that resolve. I am going to go ahead and treasure cycle that. Okay, that's not bad either. It's going to pass. Like, this leaves us the ability to still draw his disruption if we need to. I'm willing to take a hit here. See what the opponent plays first. Before we know, they're stuck on mana. Oh, they're not. Alright, their turn. Let's go ahead and let's shoot and make a treasure. Don't know what kind of deck the opponent's playing here. And then we take our turn. I mean, we can actually just roll out uh, Shark Typhoon here now. That feels like a bit of a gamble, but I'm kind of into it. Let's do it. I mean, it sets us back on Magma Opus, but, I mean, we can... Oh, they had a Banishing Light. Gosh, dang it. Well, that's what I get for being greedy. Maybe I should have just made a shark. Okay, don't mind having that. That's cool. Well, we don't be able to cast one of these anyway. So we'll let that ride. Archfiend's Vessel, okay. So if they play that, we can exile both creatures next turn. Because anytime they get damage from here, this exiles. Oh, they're choosing not to. Huh. Well, that's peculiar. All right, and let's see why the opponent wanted to uh, save that. No reason at all, apparently. This is a weird choice, but okay. We're not sacrificing that. We're not bringing that back. Like, what's up here? They're not even paying the five? wonder if they're saving something. Well, but even then, though, I was thinking, like, maybe they're playing the Malakir or whatever, Rebirth. But even that doesn't seem right. All right, I mean, I guess we're just going to do it. I, I mean... 
the highest toughness? They can maybe, I mean, I guess if they can get that past three. Sort of want to save this for later, but... Because I don't know what else they have in case we draw another one. So I'm going to do this. Okay. I guess we just pass. I mean, if we get close to where we can cast the Magma Opus, I'll eventually just put down this Jirari's Disruption. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be seven. Starting to feel like they do have another Vanishing Lights. So they're just playing a bunch of removal. They're playing black-white removal, basically, is what we're looking at. Let's go ahead, play this tapped. I think we're going to have to start just working toward a world where we can play Magma Opus. I mean, they're not going to have a way to counter it once we do whatever we do, so I'm not worried about that part of it. We have enough life that this isn't much of a concern. Probably have another. Nope. They did not. I guess we just have to test that they have another Banishing Light, huh? I mean, they might. I mean, if they do, they do. Nothing we can do about it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, this is kind of a gamble here, right? Because if we do Magma Opus, we can guarantee we can play the other one next turn. Which is pretty powerful. Or we hope to draw a card. I mean, hope to draw a land. We could take five and then five, and we wouldn't be dead yet, so sure. I mean, if they have another, they have another. Because I feel like they either have Banishing Light or they have a spot removal card, like another Murderous Rider or something. And if they do, making a shark wouldn't be any real better anyway. All right, so we got all of it. We got all the luck we needed there. Four, six, seven, eight. Uh, okay, we just pass. So here we get all the options. Let's go ahead. Deal four. Actually, we'll deal three and one. We'll tap. Why not? This and one of these. And we'll deal one, two, three, and one. That looks good. And we make an 8-8 eight, eight and a 4-4. Four, four. Draw two cards. And then we'll get to do it again. I was say, I'm just tapping it. I wasn't targeting it to kill it. Sure, Dire Tactics works. Chandra is also super sweet here. Oh yeah, Chandra's even better now that they did that. Like they've got no cards in hand. Yeah, this this is excellent. This is the best of everything. Like a 5-5. Five, five. Use Chandra to off this duder. Yep, that's it. Oh boy, this is a lot of tapped mana. I think we have to mulligan. This feels like just too much. <laughs> like, I wanted to, but that just seemed too much. Uh, let's keep... Let's tuck Nico, because we're not going to have a chance to do anything with Nico for a bit, I think. I think since I'm already going to be able to come up on four mana, I think I'm just going to do this. And then we'll just foretell this, and this allows me to put this on white and kind of set up for an R set, possibly. Oh, perfect. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to play that, actually. Because if it's a creature, we can just go ahead and fire Prophecy. If not... Hmm. Do I want that dead? Probably not.
I think we just take our time here. I don't I don't see a reason to be in a hurry. I think we can get by even just living off Narset for a little bit. I mean, who knows though? They, with black mana, they could have almost anything, I suppose. Um Okay. I mean, I'd rather not use the counter spell if we don't have to. I mean, Unless they choose Saw It Coming. Actually, if, even if they choose Saw It Coming, we'll just play Fire Prophecy. So it's not like it's a big deal. Oh, Stomp. Nope. Not Stomp. Good guess, but that was not it, opponent. Uh, I might get rid of a red lane here, though. Okay, well, that didn't change much. Well, it's not bad. Let's get some life and a mana. Oh, an opponent scoops. Oh, boy. Um, I might keep this. This is a little bit risky, but we can cycle the Shark Typhoon. We can make a treasure. So, this seems okay. We could also, like... I don't know, if we had to cycle the Opus to be able to cast the Draconic Intervention... Like, there's there's some weird things we could do if we need to sweep the board, I guess. And it looks, looks like we might have to. It's going to be getting a little desperate early. Actually, I might just Shark Typhoon for zero first. I think that's more in line with what I want to be doing. Because truthfully, we're going to want this in the yard so we can use this and get rid of those 5-5s five anyway. I might even be willing to just take a hit. Like, I don't know. Maybe we could take... Let's see. That'd be two more. We'd be at 17. Then we take seven. We go to 10. And there's two of those on the table. That's probably something we could survive, I think. I think we could do that. That helps a lot too. Means we don't actually have to use the treasure to play the Narset when the time comes. So yeah, so this is just about how much we're willing to gamble. If we think they'll play out both Lovestruck Beasts over the next two turns. If they do, then we just end up going to 10 or so and, you know, just take whatever happens. I mean, we might even throw out one Narset as bait. And prevent some damage, actually. Because having two Narsets isn't going to do much for us. That's a nice reward. And what I mean by that is, like, we can Narset here, draw a card, discard something, kill that Lovestruck Beast. Knowing Narset's at one, want to go at Narset, want to come at us. They'll play the other Lovestruck Beast. Then we could Draconic Intervention, get rid of everything, possibly just play Chandra after that, and then be off to the races. So let's do that. I think this is a little more crafty. And it gets us a little deeper on mana in case we get to a spot Let me demonstrate the prowess of where my we can ancestors. play the... Uh... Okay, we just drew a land there. Strike with a cunning mind. Um, never mind. We're just going to scrap that Magma Opus. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, I think so. I feel good about that. I am confident in this decision. Oh, so we're playing Innkeeper, then land. Then, okay, fine. Well, let's just, we, get, we basically are sacrificing Narset to be able to sweep the opponent's board. And then hopefully these this combination of ladies can finish things for us. Alas, I return to my training. But we shall see. Get all those duders. Alright. Hopefully whatever they play isn't big enough to survive 
uh, Chandra and Narset. Uh, well, that's a problem. I was just thinking maybe we could Chandra plus something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, we need eight. So the best thing we could do here would be... Hmm. I was just thinking we could destroy an artifact to get rid of that if we wanted to. I don't know how important that is, <laughs> but it's a thing we can do. The problem is by doing this, uh, there's a good chance we don't get to do anything with this Chandra because we may have to. That oh, which appears mystical is merely the result oh, never of mind. Practice. I would end up giving them a treasure anyway. Meditate with yep. me. All right. Well, here's hoping. We do still have a fire prophecy, so there's that. All right, Bone Crusher is good. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of our our finishing threats here, so we have to keep that in mind. And a love struck beast. Okay. Well, good news is we can keep one ones out of the way so we don't get hit by love struck beast. So that part is fairly easy to cover here. One, two, three. I mean, I kind of want to play the smashing, but I sort of don't because we can get rid of stuff later. So I think. No, I'm just going to pass. Our mana is more useful just to straight up play saw it coming here if we need to. Hmm. Okay, so now what do we want to do? Do we just shoot the 1-1? One, one? Just trying to decide if I want to use my mana like that. I think I want to do this in case we want to counter something. We can still saw it coming. And I think I'm actually going to let this ride. Ooh, not really what we wanted. We'll counter that, Duder. What else you got? Lands? Okay. Rimrock Knight. All right, good news. We can kill a Rimrock Knight. Uh, that's about all we can do. I'm actually not going to play a land here so I can get max value out of this draw two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess if we were to find a magma opus. Yeah, it wouldn't matter though because we still have to get rid of one of these lands. So yeah, I'm just going to pass. Man, Prismari command so good. Uh, alright. Well, I guess we're going to be taking three. Unless we find something awesome. As we will go ahead and kill the 1-1. One, one. And we're going to draw two cards. So kill that, draw two. That is not bad. I guess I should have done that in response. Maybe I could have countered a Lovestruck piece. Um, I think we're going to let the disruption go... We're going to let this hinge go. We'll just take our three. Uh-oh. Thinking about bone crushing us? Is that what's going on over there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need one more to magma opus. I think we can survive one turn and see if we find it. If we don't have to counter anything, we at least get to uh, saw, uh, saw it coming. I mean, not saw it coming, but uh, use the castle. Okay, we will castle. Oh, create about burst. Actually, I kind of like both of those. Being real, yeah, sure. 
I was gonna just stay. I mean, I got to do the thing that uh, opponents always hate. When you get to leave two on top from a scry, it's always bad. Good news never comes from that. Okay, let's shoot that for one. Opponent for three. Click the hammer targets. Uh, yeah, just submit those two. Tap the red mana, I guess. Uh, one, two, three. That's our last magma opus, too. But we do have a creative outburst on top, so that should help a lot. Ooh, and a Nico. All right. All right. Now we're doing some things. Now we're doing some things. Hold up. All right, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we have two red, two blue, so we could do that. We could counter one thing, we could Nico for one, two, three, one, two. So we could Nico for two, or do we just Nico for all of it? We're at seven, we could block one, though. If they had one of those as Embercleave and something, that's probably not good. Okay, I think we just pass. Okay, I don't think that does much to hurt us. That yeah, puts a counter on the thing. Alright, opponent. What you got? I think we're in pretty good shape here. As long as I'm patient, we should be fine. Only at seven, so we have to make sure we just can't be attacked here. So what's the trick here? We're just playing it so we can put a counter on a creature. Oh, so we can play Rimrock and then put a counter on it. All right, well, let's just do this. Since Rimrock's their last... Oh, it's not their last card. Rimrock's their second to last card. You know what? I'm willing to gamble on that, though. A chance that we get to kill a Rimrock Knight... Uh, we'll take a Shark Typhoon. Feels pretty good. Tamari Command, we like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, almost where we want to be. Let's go ahead and tuck that for now. And we'll pass. So next turn, we can Shark Typhoon, possibly, and use this. If we draw a land. Uh, we could shoot and make a treasure to open that door. So let's go ahead and do that. Like the opponent just wants to get us, fling that at us for six or something. Like so be it. We have, we have saw it coming still sitting here. So we're safe. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and do this. And this will at least start letting us move the game to the finish. No attacks. Pretty much as long as nothing's lethal or creates a future lethal situation over a turn or two, we're not really going to be too worried about it. Uh, Magda. Yeah, you can have a Magda. We can shoot Magda with Fire Prophecy. Okay. Starting to get into the rhythm where we want to be now. Let's go ahead and... One, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'm willing to spend... I'm willing to spend six on Nico. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would leave us two to shoot a Magda. Uh, well, we would make a two, two blocker. Let's just pass. No attacks. We're at a point where we're pretty safe. We don't need to risk anything. 
It would just be needless. If they go to attack, we try to shoot Magda. Then we'll just see what happens after that. We won't be using anything. I mean, as far as putting a card back. We'll decline that. And now we can still uh, use the castle and still have two up with our treasure to use the saw it coming. That's a primal might something I imagine here. It's the shatter skull smashing. Well, we will not allow that. Do I have to do anything else, opponent? This stage, the writing's on the wall. I will have to leave mana up in case they are playing any type of fling effects. That is a real concern here. Uh, ooh, another shark typhoon. We could do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and have two mana up. Uh, probably not going to happen, but probably better than anything else we're gonna get i could also just cycle it if the time came one two three four five i guess we'll just nico for two one two three four five all right prophesize all you want my life is my own this attack for five in the air. Yeah, now I'm not really sure what the opponent could have that would be threatening. Even if they had a 1-1 one -one to attack with the Love Struck Beast, we'd probably just let them attack and then try to counter like an Ember Cleave or something. Oh, I didn't even activate Nico. I should have just plus one. That was a dumb mistake. I was so excited I got Nico into play. But now we get to scry and draw and opponent's going to be in a little bit of trouble. We have five. We have, we have lethal in the air. So if they can't... Yeah, they're actually dead. Because they can't even kill a creature here with us holding the... Saw it coming. Wow, this was a total control exhibition, really. The opponent, after we did that big sweeper around turn four or five, I think it was turn five... Like, they did nothing after that. And it wasn't even about, like, our planeswalkers or anything. We just kind of systematically got there. The spells did all the work in this game. So that's actually very cool. Like, it's always one of those things where, like, you don't know how it's going to work out. So it's pretty cool when it comes together and does the thing. But it's definitely a deck where you have to have patience, where y'all saw, where I kind of wanted to do some things and wasn't able to. And had to kind of work into a spot where didn't leave ourselves shields down at any point. Well, in case y'all didn't know, while the opponent's uh, roping, merchandise. I has it. Uh, check it out. I have two links. One goes to Stream Elements if you want, like, shirts, mugs. Uh, stuff like that, hoodies, and then I have a separate one that goes to our podcast link if you want to get playmats and tokens with my likeness on them. I'll even autograph them for you before I send them out. Oh, I wish this was more entertaining to watch, but uh, I guess the opponent just decided to rope us because they were active up until the last turn they were going to die. <laughs> but that's fine. I am totally good with it. We're still getting to win, and it only costs us like an extra two minutes. <laughs> hmm. Well, for those of you that haven't seen the tokens on a previous video, here you go. 
Let's see if you can see those. One of me and one of my co-hosts on our podcast, Color of Magic. You should check out our podcast, by the way. Uh, 82 episodes are up now. A full NBA season's worth. Yeah, this one's all secure. Alright, so this deck worked out pretty well. It actually has the ability to lock out opponents pretty strongly, which I was really surprised by how efficiently it was able to do it. And our only loss, really, I think, if I remember right, was to the, uh, the one other control deck. And I'm pretty sure I played that game wrong. I think there's a couple of decisions in there I could have made that would have made that a lot better for me. So, I don't know. I don't know how strong the deck is, but it held its own against some pretty efficient stuff. Uh, we were, like I said, we're able to close out games very quickly to get to a winning position. Uh, we got into some spots where we didn't even feel threatened, really, in a few of them. And that was pretty impressive. So I'm probably going to spend a little bit more time tweaking this list a little bit. I think it's possible that we could cut a land and play another Rowan, because that's, I think, the only card we didn't draw and get to really feature in these videos. And I think we could get away with that. We had plenty of mana, except for maybe in one game. So I feel pretty confident that we could cut a land and play another Rowan, and we wouldn't be too upset by that. Now, for today's card spotlight, it's kind of personal story time, but we're going to talk about Quorum Trench Gnomes. Now, this card really doesn't do much. It's kind of a weird card from Legends, but the story is more about the first time I played Regionals was back in 97, and I got a pairing, and I believe it was like round five. And I got paired up, and my opponent's name was Hatter, comma, The Mad. So then I sat down to play my opponent and I said, hey, what's your name? And he says, the Mad Hatter. And I was like, cool, but what does your mama call you? And he says, no, my name is actually the Mad Hatter. And I was like, dude, really? And he showed me his ID and I'll be damned if it didn't say Hatter, the Mad. Apparently I had his name legally changed. Now I bring up this character, which by the way, Hatter was a great dude and I got to know him over the years, but he actually collected Quorum Trench Gnomes. And at one point, and this is way back in like, 97 to 98 i think the last time i asked him about him might have been around 99 but he actually ended up with something like two percent or three percent of the print run of quorum trench gnomes which is insane because it's literally like binders full the funny thing is though if he actually still has them he has a small fortune worth of quorum trench gnomes right now because those things are like 45 dollars or something so hey you never know how things are going to turn out just a weird life journey but a fun story don't forget, if you want today's deck list, you can get it down in the description below. And if you want to come follow us on Twitch or on Facebook Gaming or help me out by buying some merchandise, all those links are down in the description below. And don't forget that you can like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, because that'll help me out really, really ever so much and help you out be notified every time I have a video up. And we're getting so close to a million views on the channel, which is crazy. I'm super excited about that. And we're just short of 12,000 subscribers. It's been an amazing 14 months. And I want to say thank you to all of you. And if you haven't subscribed and come on board, please do so. And while you're at it, go watch a couple of my videos. Try to watch about at least 10 minutes, though, and help me out. But that's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.